Back it up, back it up, back it up. Actually, you know what? There is no one behind the wheel of this brand new Genesis GV80. I'm just testing out the, the smart park assist. Ever since Genesis was introduced as a brand, I've been quite impressed with their products, with their flagship G90, their G80, and of course that sporty G70. And then they said they were gonna come out with SUVs and I was quite excited. I saw the launch of the GV80 online. I saw the pictures, I'm thinking, I don't know if it's really all that to me. I wasn't that excited, but now I have it here in person and I gotta tell you, I'm excited again. In Canada, there are four trim levels to choose from for the GV80, starting with the four cylinders, there's the standard and the advanced, and then when you go into the V6, you have the advanced and the prestige. This is the prestige here, and remember, depending on what market you're in, you may have different trim levels, and in Canada, it works a little bit different as well. We only have trim levels and no packages. In other markets, you might uh, choose a um, one standard trim level, and then you can order a different package on top of that, but here it's one price, one trim level, and that's it. One nice thing, regardless of what package you get, every GV80 pretty well looks the same other than the wheels, which we'll get to in a sec. So starting from the front, uh, some people have compared this to a Bentley. I can definitely see the resemblance uh, from the actual emblem, which is the wing. And then you have this monster crest grill, kind of like Superman, this crest grill with the G matrix pattern. That's what they call it. Um, I'm not usually a huge fan of chrome, but it really works with this GV80. It works very, very well with the, with the chrome grill. The chrome accents on the side, it really pinches that uh, belt in. It really accentuates the look of this vehicle. You have standard quad LED headlamps and standard LEDs all around. I like how this motif, this stripe actually continues right down the side and onto the back as well. And here's the only difference in appearance. The base model gets standard 19 inch wheels and then you go 20 inch for the advanced four cylinder. And when you get into the V6 turbo, they come with 22 inch wheels. Check out these 22s on this Prestige. They are absolutely stunning. I really like these side marker lights as well. And all GV80s come with proximity sensor keys. So just grab the handle to unlock and you can just press the handle to lock. Now, the one thing about this GV80 though, doesn't matter what trim you get, and it's kind of one of my pet peeves because I like this feature, I love this feature. However, it does not work for the back door, unlock or lock only for the front doors and I think that's a little bit of a downfall for this level of vehicle when a lot of less premium vehicles are including that feature nowadays so I'd like to see that come up in the next version. This one is also equipped with by the way soft closed doors. That is the nice touch right there. I like continuity. So what's in the front continues on to the back with that dual line design. And you can see you have a two part uh, LED tail lamp display here. And it's quite stylish. It really, really stands out. And another thing that stands out are these exhaust finishers. Check them out. They're actually shaped in the same crest shape as the actual grill. So uh, all GV80s come standard with a power lift gate with a smart trunk. So if this is locked and you have it activated, you just walk up to the vehicle and it beeps three times. If you're here on the fourth beep, it'll automatically open for you. Uh, or you can actually right below the windshield wiper assembly, just hit that button, kind of Porsche-like on uh, some of the Porsches. And here you go. Now this 3.5 liter Prestige comes with the third row. We have the third row folded down right now. So let's give you an idea of what we can fit in here. Here's one camera bag and then I have the travel trunk here. So uh, a lot of room. If you want to fold that third row up, you actually have here, you have power buttons. Now, one thing though, I find them quite slow going up or down. This is real time right here. All right, so let's just bring them all the way. Put those headrests up just to show you how much room we have here 
and I'm going to put this camera bag here. Now you have an idea. This travel trunk will not fit behind the third row at all. Just to show you. Not quite. So you're going to have to put that third row down to fit something uh, like this suitcase here. You can also control the second row folding from the back as well. There really isn't just one word to describe the interior of the new GV80. Uh, you could just call it exquisite, rich, opulent. You could just go on and on. It's just very, very hard to describe without you actually being in here and experiencing it because pictures just don't do it justice. Just for comparison, let's say I just got out of my uh, Highlander and it's uh, the limited, so it has all the bells and whistles. It's got leather and interior, uh, but going from my Highlander into this is like comparing skim milk to rich cream. It's just that much more. Uh, you just experience it without even having to actually drive this vehicle, just touching the steering wheel. This is the Prestige. It comes with a two-tone steering wheel. And check out the colors in this. You have this tan leather and the, this blue uh, two-tone steering wheel. It's absolutely gorgeous. Then you get these quilted Napa leather seats in the Prestige. If you go into the Advanced, you do get leather, but not the Napa leather. All GV80s come standard with heated second row and first row seats and heated steering wheel. Uh, and when you get into the Advanced, you actually get ventilated seats in the front. And in this Prestige, you get ventilated front and uh, second row seats as well as heat as well and a massage kind of a massage and invigoration feature for the driver's seat as well in the center you have a beautiful 14 and a half screen and I gotta say the graphics on this are killer killer crisp it is so good uh, you also get um, a rear view camera and if you get into the advanced model you get a, a round view monitor as well you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that comes standard it is not wireless though so you do have to plug it in like we have here. Speaking of plugging in, you have two USBs. You also have a wireless charging a system that's standard on all GV80s up front. You have two USBs in the second row as well. All vehicles get a standard panel roof as well. This Prestige gets the suede uh, roof liner. Here's something very special behind the steering wheel here. Uh, standard is an eight inch display, uh, but when you get into the Prestige, you go up to the 12.3 inch full digital uh, cockpit but it's not just a regular digital cockpit, it's 3D. Uh, so when you look at it, when I first sat in here, I'm like, okay, it kind of looks like there's, there's multiple screens layered. And um, the more I looked at it, I'm like, okay, and you're trying to touch it, and you're like, what? You know, let's, let's close one eye, okay, no, yeah, okay. Wow, it is three-dimensional, it's wild. It's the first time I've ever seen that. Uh, it's pretty cool. And unfortunately, I don't think it'll show up in the videos that I'm gonna show you here. But uh, along with that, you also get the blind spot uh, video monitor. So when you turn the signal on, the camera comes on the left side and vice versa for the right side. That is a very popular item uh, from the Hyundai family. So we mentioned there are four models. The base model starts at just under $65,000 Canadian. And the next model up in the four cylinder is the 2.5 uh, Advanced. And I really recommend people to get that if you're uh, wanting to get the four cylinder because it's only $5,000 more. So it's $70,000 and it just gets you uh, a lot more uh, content. Like you get a standard head up display. You get the around view monitor. You get rear climate control as well as manual uh, rear sunshades. And you get 20 inch wheels. I think that is really the sweet spot uh, as far as value is concerned with the GV80. The base audio system is a nine speaker system. Uh, however, if you go into the 3.5T Advanced, uh, you get into the 21 speaker Lexicon system. It not only sounds good, but it even looks good. I, I like the look of the speaker grills actually. As for negative, you know, it can't always be rainbows and unicorns uh, storage. There is ample storage in the middle here and it opens like a butterfly. So it's accessible from all the passengers, which is a nice thing. You do have cup holders. I do find the door pockets are quite narrow. So if I use my Yeti mug here and it fits in those holders, but it will not fit 
in the side door. Uh, so that's a small thing. And then you get to the center control area here, which I am a fan of how it looks. Uh, when I first hopped in here or even just looked at the interior, it looks it looks very, very uh, rich and clean and modern. Um, however, the usability is not uh, equal to how it looks. So that 14 and a half inch screen is a touch screen. So you can operate by touch uh, or you can operate it with this dial here. So this dial rotates, okay, and the center is is a kind of a trackpad. It feels great, by the way. It's a, it has a glass uh, feel to it, or oh, it is a glass, I believe. And so you can actually use it for um, writing characters or selecting things by going left or right. All right. And this round part that turns also clicks. And the issue I have with it is that there's not a lot of traction. So it's not really raised up. So you actually have to kind of push down to actually turn it. But if you push down too much, it's gonna select something on the screen and you don't want that. So yeah, so you can just go and hey, let's just use the screen. But the screen is quite wide, so the things on the right side uh, can be a little bit far to reach. So if you're driving here and I can't reach the far right there, okay? So I'm gonna go and, and uh, let's say I wanna use my Apple CarPlay and it's on the far right, it's, I have to kind of reach for it. Um, also, since this is a dial for selecting what you want on, for your infotainment and the transmission uh, selector is also a dial, there is a small chance, and I did do it once, I was just maneuvering the vehicle around my driveway though, uh, where um, I, instead of hitting OK on the infotainment that I was thinking of, I hit the P button instead because they're not too far apart and this thing went to park and luckily I was not going very, uh, very fast. I'm sure if you own the vehicle, you're gonna get used to it, but I just wanna tell you, you know, just be aware, uh, those two dials are kind of close and yeah, not my favorite system. I do like the look of it though. Ah, uh, you gotta love soft closed doors, don't you? Okay, so, um, love these seats. Man, oh man, the leather on everything is just so <laughs> soft. So, room-wise, uh, these seats, they slide forward and back. Most of the time, you'd probably use it to slide forward to give the third row passengers a little bit more room. But let's go all the way back. That's as much as it goes. Um, ample leg room. And foot room is adequate. I would, wouldn't mind a little bit more. Um, now, it would be nice if these seats would actually uh, go further back, just in case if you don't have people in the, in the third row, you'd actually have more room in the second row. Uh, however, you can recline these seats as well all the way back to here not too bad so you could use this kind of more like a, an executive uh, driver uh, this passenger front passenger seat also has controls on the side so the people in the back let's say the passenger can slide this passenger seat forward and back and also recline it or push it back to get more room so uh, the right side Second row is the place to be. Small little hump, you have your automatic climate control. I mentioned this does have heated and ventilated seats in the rear. And the second row also gets their own vanity mirrors. Fold that out, get a little bit of light there. And this also is equipped with power uh, privacy shades as well. Okay, there is a button on the top or on the bottom of the second row where you just press it and the seat will go forward it's a pretty small opening to get into though let's close this door oh I'm getting old man okay let's pull this back okay um, I'm five ten and a half and my neck is craned right now because of the lower roof back here this is not really comfortable uh, smaller people it will be fine larger people in a pinch 
uh, yeah, it's really, really not comfortable on, on my neck at all. Uh, but that's not a surprise. This is not a full-size vehicle. Just remember that. Uh, nice, nice seats though, just like the, the other rows. You do have a cup holder on each side. Uh, this right side gets a little compartment, which is very nice. You have your own speaker and your own air vent. Two seat belts back here, so it's only for two people, making this a seven passenger vehicle. Um, one thing to note though, if you want to go for the third row, in Canada that is, you have to go into the 3.5T. So if you wanna, let's say, stick with the four cylinder, you can't get the third row as an option at all, which is unfortunate. Maybe you want to you know, save a little fuel and you want that third row in a pinch, you just can't get it. But um, that is the third row back here, and let's get out of here. Ugh. We mentioned there are two different engine options for the GV80, and that is in our Canadian market here. So there is a 2.5 uh, four-cylinder turbo and a 3.5 uh, six-cylinder turbocharged engine. The four-cylinder puts out 300 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque, while the six-cylinder turbo puts out 375 horsepower and 391 pound-feet of torque. Both are matched to an eight-speed automatic transmission and both have a towing capacity of 6,000 pounds. In Canada, all GV80s come standard with all-wheel drive, so there is not a rear-wheel drive option. Uh, by the way, this new chassis or this platform is an actual rear-wheel drive platform, so Genesis has designed this to have uh, the most engaging drive as you can get. Uh, it's more of a rear bias system, so uh, when you do need the extra additional traction, it will send power to the front wheels, but uh, on the most part, rear bias system. Also for this all-wheel drive system, there is a, a terrain mode. So if you press that button, you can go into snow, you can go into mud, and that's gonna change uh, your traction control settings. Once you get into the 3.5 turbo, you also get adaptive suspension with a road preview. So right above the rear view uh, mirror, there is a camera mounted out the windshield, and that is going to scan the road ahead and look for uh, deviations in the road, and it's going to adjust the suspension based on that. So, uh, so you go the 3.5 turbo advanced, and also for the uh, prestige that we have, you will get that. All right, let's put into sport mode. We are at a light right now, and uh, let's just see what this baby's got. 375 ponies. Now, one thing that the GV80 does not have, though, it doesn't have a higher performance version like some of its competitors do. So no V8 versions with 500 plus horsepower like BMW or Mercedes-Benz has. So that might be something that's coming down the road. If you do want something that has everything, well, you're gonna have to go for them. Let's go. It's no slouch whatsoever. Um, it's not the quickest to accelerate or to uh, change gears. You do have paddle shifters here, by the way. So if we go into our paddles, you are gonna get a little bit more uh, of an engaging drive. Uh, one thing that I've noticed though, and I noticed this on, on the BMW as well, and I'm not a fan of, it's a, a little pet peeve of mine, is that on this digital display here, they have the speedometer turns the regular standard way, but the tachometer goes opposite so it goes counterclockwise and I don't like that I really don't like that it feels like I'm redlining all the time um, and since this is a digital cockpit and I think it'd be pretty easy if they could just give you the option you can go either way but you can't it basically just goes counterclockwise it's a pet peeve of mine the drive of this GV80 is very very luxurious and what do I mean by that nothing is abrupt uh, everything's quite smooth and very linear uh, the steering is predictable it's very easy to drive this vehicle it's easy to steer the suspension is uh, very comfortable the seats are so comfy in this vehicle and it's quiet this stretch of road that I'm using uh, I've used it on a lot of other reviews it's a very noisy 
highway. Uh, the pavement is very noisy, and this is probably one of the, the quietest uh, interiors I've actually been in in a long time. And it's just isolating you from everything. Uh, as you can see, I'm also not holding onto the steering wheel right now because we have uh, a lane keeping assist. There are so many standard uh, safety features in this. You have your, your rear cross traffic alert, your frontal collision alert, blind spot. You even have a new a center um, airbag that comes up in the middle here and that is to protect you from knocking into the passenger in the front seat if you have uh, a collision so lots of different things this is also equipped with the latest highway driving assistant too so if you're on a road like this highway we can actually set it right now let's uh, set the mode here and let's set our speed Okay, now we are actually hands-free and depending on how many corrections the system has to make, this can go on basically autonomous driving for not just seconds, but minutes and minutes and minutes. Uh, and it all depends. Right now we are going to round a bend, so it might, it says, it says keep your hands on the wheel. But if you're on a really straight stretch of highway and you're not going uh, overly over speed, you can go for long periods of time. And it is nice for longer trips, not to just go hands off, but just to take a little bit of stress off driving. So how does this compare to some of its competitors? Well, let's let's see, what are the competitors? Um, uh, let's say the BMW X5 for sure is one uh, competitor. And if we compare four cylinder versions to four cylinder versions, uh, this one, I would, like I said, the sweet spot would be the 2.5T Advanced, which comes in at $70,000, and it comes with a lot, a lot of standard features. It's pretty loaded. So if you compare that to BMW's four-cylinder turbo, which starts at $77,000, and you equip it the way that this is equipped, you're going to be paying about $95,000 for that X5. Uh, however, you will get more power, 35 horsepower more than the GV80 with the 2.5T. If we want to compare this, let's say, to the Mercedes-Benz GLE 350, which uses a two-liter turbocharged engine, that one runs about $80,000, so $10,000 more than this one. Uh, however, you do get 45 more horsepower than the GV80. Let's compare a three-row SUV to the GV80, and let's bring in uh, something like the Accurate MDX, which is a popular three-row premium SUV. And in its Elite trim, that comes in at $62,000, whereas you have to go into the 3.5 uh, Advanced with this one, uh, and that comes in at $80,000. So that is a significant difference. However, it really is not apples to apples. Just the attention to detail on this vehicle, it just puts it in a class so much higher than the MDX. Genesis, you really have done it again. You have really leveled up. Uh, this has really set the bar very, very high for any of your future products coming. I just love the experience of this Genesis. And I mentioned the look of the steering wheel, but the touch and the feel of this thing is incredible. It's uh, soft to the touch. It's, there's no seams, there's no uh, threads that are sharp at all. It's a little bit spongy. It's what you would associate with uh, something that is just super, super uh, high-end and premium. So what do you think of this new GV80? Leave a comment below. I'm really curious to know your thoughts. As I said earlier, I wasn't quite sure about this GV80 when I saw it online, when it was first launched. And when I have it in person right now, though, it really has changed my mind. Uh, it really is a very stunning looking vehicle. It's very striking. Uh, the interior, it's gorgeous. The, the materials are amazing. And it really goes to show what Genesis is capable of. One vehicle that I'm really excited to see, though, is the GV70. I think that's really going to hit the sweet spot. And if it's anything like this GV80 and they can price it right, I think Genesis is going to have a huge hit on their hands. Anyways, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next Everyday Reviews. Cheers. It should detect that there is an opening right about there. So let's see if it sees it or not. Okay, it does. 
So we want to select parallel parking. We're going to put it into P, unfasten seatbelt, and we're going to get out. Okay, no one is in the car now. We are going to hit and hold P. And there it goes, by itself. This is weird. Whoa. 